Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Outer Beats. My name is Marco, and at the moment we're explaining what the system architecture is for Outer Last week we went through the logical architecture and the functional architecture. Now, in this session, we're going to focus on the physical architecture, the characteristics of it. In the next session, we're going to explain the history, that is, the evolution of the vehicle electrical and electronic architecture. So just to give uh, some previous information, the logical architecture is the product of the decomposition of the function into a set of components. And then in this architecture, we also define the messages that are interchanged between these components. We also see that this view is equivalent to the one that we have just presented, that is this one. It has the same information, it's just that this view is more common in the outer source documentation, but it has basically the same information, components, messages, um, interfaces. And so after the decomposition, the next logical step will be to work on the allocation. So what is allocation? The short answer is assign each logical component to an ECU. But here in these videos, we don't want to stick with that. We want a further explanation. What is uh, basically the long answer about this? And with that, we're going to explain the principles of the design of Autosar. So for that, we're going to focus now our attention into what automotive means for Autosar. So first of all, what's so special about automotive? Uh, what type of system we're dealing with? The next characteristic or the first characteristic will be that it is a distributed, distributed system. And then each node is in reality an ECU, an electronic control unit. And so an ECU, according to the Autosar documentation, according to the Autosar layered architecture, its properties are that there is a strong interaction with hardware, there is a connection to a vehicle network, microcontrollers, it is typically a real-time system, and the program execution is from internal or external flash memory, that is, firmware. So the allocation is shown, the allocation process is shown in this diagram. We basically go from having this logical architecture into an allocation of this components into a set of ECUs that, as we have already mentioned, are connected to a vehicle network. So consider that we have this set of ECUs, short range radar, steering wheel, door control module. And then we want to allocate our components into these ECUs. So there you go, that's uh, one way to do it. We uh, assigned the object detection component to the short range radar, as well as the blind spot warning algorithm component into it. So we basically work on assigning a component to the ECU that makes more sense. For example, let's say that this um, Lane change intention notifier has some ACLD requirements, and it turns out that the steering wheel is an ECU that is capable of allocating this ACLD components, has an ACLD compliant architecture. So it will make sense to allocate this component into this ECU. There might be some other criteria. For example, we want to have our component to be as close to the sensor or, or actuator as possible. So that's another criteria, for example. So um, that's the work that is basically done on the physical, when creating the physical architecture. So as a reminder, we have gone from the function 
to the logical architecture and then to the physical architecture. And the good thing about our SAR being, uh, as we have explained, an open or supporting uh, open system architecture is that, for example, let's say that in our system we don't have a short range radar and we don't want to allocate our kinesthetic indicator to the steering wheel, we can, we can work out several other options. For example, having object detection allocated to the camera, the blind spot warning algorithm allocated to the domain controller unit in case there is one in our vehicle architecture, and the kinesthetic indicator, uh, pardon the typo, kinesthetic indicator allocated to the pedal. So uh, whatever configuration we have of PCUs, we can work out several options based on the limitations or characteristics of our ECUs. One thing I want to mention here is that the logical view doesn't change for this component. They don't care about where these components are allocated. This view doesn't change for them. This abstraction, this uh, is made possible by ours are basically via the virtual functional bus. So that's basically the purpose of ours are to be able to develop software that is applications that are hardware independent. And so this is all abstracted or yeah, this is all abstracted by the RTE and by the basic software. So we're gonna explain that in the next session, of course. And the plan is that perhaps maybe this uh, next week we're gonna go or focus now on what the what Autosar is, whether it is a consortium, an architecture, or a platform, and uh, maybe we're gonna focus a bit more on what distributed and centralized means for the vehicle architecture, and that will bring the uh, the discussion of what Autosar Classic and Adaptive are. So thank you all for your attention. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the hashtag there or uh, if you want to connect with me, it's fine. So see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.